now that we have the 23 AI created and we have our admin user set up, so that was part of the creation process. Some of what we might want to do is create some additional users. So because we're never going to use the admin apart from doing administration. So what we're going to do is we're going to here within the, the console being able to create an additional user. So what I'm going to do is just open up what's called uh, database actions. You might get some messages being displayed uh, in, in this kind of uh, scenario. Um, but what we can do is we can kind of create different users. So if we wanted to go and write some SQL, we could go and use that. Uh, but more than likely, you want to be able to use uh, like VS Code or uh, some other tool to be able to do that. So a simple way to be able to do it is if we go back again to this kind of database actions and we go down to database users. Uh, this will open another tab for us. So it has some details of different schemas that we have available within the database. Now, they're all kind of admin uh, and administration related schemas, which we're not going to be using or interested in. Uh, so the one that we're really interested in, or the button that we're interested in here, is the create user. So if we click on that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a, a user, Brandon. I'm going to give it a password that hopefully I can remember. All right. Now, if I wanted to set up other things in relation to that, that might be what we want to do. Um, and you know, if we want to do Oracle Machine Learning, if we want to kind of graph, if we want to do kind of other kind of uh, things to do with REST services, stuff like that. So I'm just going to enable those. And then we go and click User, Create User. Okay, so there we have the user created. Okay, now I could go and use database actions and log in as that user be able to do it. But if I go to VS Code, so this is my kind of uh, uh, environment. So we have our admin user set up. So we've seen that previously. So I'm going to create a new one. Let me just scroll that down. Move that down. So we're going to do a cloud 23AI. We're going to call that rent. Brandon, hopefully I'll get the right password. Just remember to save the password. And we're going to change the connection type to wallet. So just, just like what we did before, we're going to uh, select the wallet that we have. And we're going to uh, maybe do a quick test connection on it. Fingers crossed, it passes the connection so we can save it. Okay, so if I double click on that, we should get the connection opening up for us. So it's connecting to that uh, Oracle 23 AI database in Oracle Cloud that we just created uh, previously. Now we don't have anything there, but one of the things that we can do is say if we um, create a new worksheet, which is going to be attached to that particular uh, user. And then if we kind of um, see, do I have that copy and paste in? So these are just commands that you would have seen in other videos. We're just going to run that. Uh, I'll need to bring up the, the bottom one. And we get to see that we are using uh, 23, uh, 4. 2405 um, database user. We can check to see what user we're a part of, and you can see that's Brandon. And you know, if you were using, say, the virtual machine, uh, we would have had to have perform additional steps to grant the the developer role to Brandon. But we get to see is that well, that's kind of already been kind of granted for us in this particular case. Um, and one kind of other interesting thing is if we do the show pluggable DBs uh, and show that, is that, well, that's not allowed within the autonomous database, right? Because it's kind of self-managing. And then we can go and create our tables and we can update that and we get to see that table appearing 
over here in our uh, list. So we get to see it there. So there we have VS Code connecting to uh, basically like a developer schema in the Oracle 23 AI autonomous database.